It's time to learn, repair, and maintain everything coffee. Instructional videos brought to you by WholeLatteLove.com. Hi, I'm Todd with Whole Latte Love. We have Mark behind the camera. And Todd, you got a big smile on your face because we've got something pretty darn cool here, right? Yeah, we have an ECM machine that's been cut open so you can see inside of it. You can see inside the boilers, see inside some of the valves, the solenoid valves. And that way Even we can the show E61, you how the whole, right? Yeah, the E61. We can show you how the whole thing works. I mean, really dig in. Yeah. So we're going to follow the path of the water flow as it goes go through each valve and each fitting and end up in the E61 that will give a really good description how the E61 works. All so right. there may be a few mysteries you've had, uh, you've seen about these machines and now we're going to solve them. Cool. This is, it's a good opportunity and I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So we're going to follow water flow through the machine. And, and Yep. So the water comes either in through the water line connection mm -hmm. or through where the reservoir connects. You have a valve here that controls which one you're drawing from. Water flows through this stainless steel tube here, braided tube, mm -hmm. into the pump, out of the pump, and through this braided stainless steel line. Now, here's your brew pressure control here. That just controls how much water is going to bypass, therefore, how, you know, keep circulating within the pump instead of sending it out to the machine. That's how you control your brew pressure. Okay. They don't have a cutaway of that, but we don't need that. Okay, so the braided stainless steel line, which actually is a great feature to have this. There's no Teflon tube in here. This is very durable. Uh, very good quality. Mm -hmm. So water comes through here to this T. This goes up to your brew pressure gauge. And this then over to this T, and water picks one of two paths. One goes towards the brewing system, one towards filling the boiler with water for the boiler fill. So we'll go this way first. Okay. It goes through your solenoid valve. In the cutaway here, you can see there's the, the, uh, the coil that's copper. So this mm -hmm. basically is a magnet that has a plunger in there. It controls yeah. Oh, you've got more toys over yeah. there. Actually, we'll pull this out. We'll show you how that works. Sure. Okay, you'll see there's an arrow on there that shows where the water flow is. Mm -hmm. And we'll open this up. Then we'll open this up and show you how that works. So the water comes in this side and goes up to that opening there. Then when the valve opens, this port is open, the water comes down through here and out the other side. They do it this way, if the water came in through this side, the pressure for the water might actually push the valve open. That's why okay. it's important to have it go the right direction. So inside of here, here's your valve seat right there. Mm -hmm. And so here's your plungers, it has a little spring on top. Magnet gets energized, pulls this up. Kind of show, here's a magnet, I kind of want to show you how this thing works. Sure. Real quick, trying to keep moving here. We'll get some power to it. More power. So when I plug this in, it'll become magnetized. Okay, see? Yeah. Can you hear it? Oh yeah. When you unplug it, drops that, out. That goes away. Okay. Yeah. So that's, oops, that's the magic behind that. So up through the solenoid valve, through a check valve. Okay, we'll spend a couple seconds on this. Uh -huh. It's actually a really nice valve. And the check valve? Well, the purpose of that is to keep water from the boiler pushing back down to the solenoid valve, going the opposite way where we can actually open that solenoid valve. Remember how I showed you that? Yep. How we, pressure could open that? This will keep that from happening. Okay. So inside here, you've got your spring. Mm -hmm. Then I'll dump this out, and then you've got a little metal washer, mm -hmm. and you have a ball, and inside there you have a valve seat that okay. goes up. So that drops there, water goes this way, you can't get by it. Okay. Another little valve seat there, so when that screws into or drops into here, it seals real nice. And there's a little spacer in there. Okay, so once we get through this check valve, we just go directly into the boiler and okay. fills that up. I'll kind of stick with that for a minute. The yeah. boiler level is controlled through this probe here. There's normally Which a wire that goes to that. See deep inside the little stick sticking down there. Yep. Yep. So the water level is approximately there. Okay. When this senses that there's no water in it, it sends a, like a little charge through the water to the mm -hmm. case. Then it knows there's water. When the water level goes down and it can't do that, the board senses it, turns the pump on goes through the solenoid valve, it fills the boiler. Okay. So let's follow the other path. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're back to the T here. Again, through another check valve, 
you always like check valves so it doesn't send any water back. It okay. goes out the other side, underneath the pump, mm -hmm. comes over to here. Now this goes up towards your heat exchanger in the machine, which is right in there. So that's the element to heat it and then it was, back behind there. Oh, behind there, way behind there is the heating element. Yeah. But this is really cool how this works. Okay, so the, the key with the E61 group, like we have here, is that water right. circulates through this group all the time to keep it hot. Right. It comes, and when you look over here, you'll see two tubes. One there, and one here. The hot water goes in there, mm -hmm. it comes down, as it cools, back to this other tube, which brings it right down over to here, back to this valve. And you can see, so the water comes from the pump, comes up through here, through this copper tube, but there's an opening around that there, so the water can circulate. The cold water coming back goes through here, goes back up around this copper tube into mm -hmm. the heat exchanger. Which, and that's cut away, so it's... <laughs> yes, yep, yeah. through there, then up to the group, and then back down again. That's how you get this, the thermal uh, siphon system working on this. So water is just constantly circulating no matter, you know, as long as the machine's on and warmed up. And hot. You got yeah. it. So when you're brewing, the water comes through this tube here, mm -hmm. through this tube, comes out here into the heat exchanger, pressurizes this, which forces water up through this tube here and out to the brew group, which we'll go over in a minute how that works. Mm -hmm. Uh, they always say they go to the center of this, that way you, you mix the water. You okay. Always keep it mixed. So the water that's coming through the thermal siphon kind of comes around the edges of that yeah. tube and not through it. Right through there. Yep. Okay. Cool. Water up and just keep circulating. Uh, while we're at the boiler level, we'll get back yeah. to E61 in a minute. Mm -hmm. So if you're steaming, this tube here, mm -hmm. that takes the water or the steam right. over through your steam valve here. And if you're doing hot water, yeah, let's see if you can see where it hooks on. Yeah. Hooks onto the bottom here, obviously below the water level. Right. Open that, and all the pressure pushes pushes water. it up to the tube, out through here. Okay. Well, let's take a look at these valves for a minute. Sure. As long as we're looking at the valve. So these are pretty cool valves. So when you, a lever style. Yep, lever style. So you notice when you push on it here, it opens up there. So the hot water steam comes through here. It can't get anywhere because mm -hmm. this valve seat right there is stuck up against here, right. the brass here. The when you open this, it allows the pressure to come through and out and down, whether it's steam or hot water. Right. So, they, so it's nice. The only pressure holding this on here is just the spring. So it's not like taking a, screwing down a valve. We right. screw it constantly, and you can overpressurize it and damage it. Damage the valve. So that with the spring, it's a it's more reliable, longer-lasting sort of setup. That is correct. Let's see. Kind of want to show you how these the steam wants stay. You notice how they stay up. And you're just like, mm -hmm. well, how does it do that? <laughs> um, here's what you got. Uh, you'll have a gasket there, mm -hmm. and then you have this brass piece here that's it's milled to fit right onto the ball here, and the spring goes up. But so that's the pressure on the spring when you tighten the nut down that holds this up. Keeps that in position. Yeah. So if you ever notice your your wand is drooping a little bit, you know, might probably need a spring. spring. You, you might be able to extend it out a little bit. Okay. But that's not a normal thing that really happens. Okay. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Oh, uh, pressure stat. As long as we're here. Mm -hmm. Takes the pressure off the top of the sense the pressure off the top of the boiler here, mm -hmm. up into here, um, and that's what turns on the heating element yep. basically. Controls the heat. On top of the boiler, we got two little gizmos here. We have a vacuum relief valve, and we have a pressure relief valve, also known as a safety. Okay. So in the vacuum relief valve, you can, if I can pull that up, yep. you see that rubber yep. O-ring right there that goes up, seals against this Teflon. So, so sometimes before <clears throat> the machine heats up and you hear some a little bit of hissing inside for a moment, yeah. that's before that valve's closed, right? Yes, exactly. The purpose of this is open it to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So as you're heating, the water can boil off and heat up before mm -hmm. if this was if this didn't have it, a few things could happen. Well, first you can get a vacuum in here sometimes. If you go to steam milk, mm -hmm. it could suck milk up your steam wand into the boiler and that's a real mess. Mm -hmm. And second of all, it allows it to heat better. 
Okay. So the steam will come blasting through there. When it gets, picks up enough velocity, it'll close. It closes that valve up. Okay. So just maybe you can see a little better here. Sure. Okay. So there's your rubber. Mm -hmm. Feels up against that Teflon right there. Notice how this is shaped? So this can catch the steam real nicely. So and it force it up. it up. Okay. Yep. Here's your safety valve. Mm -hmm. oh, a little different. I have one here. And basically, it's very simple. It's got a spring on it, which mm -hmm. holds this down, which, hang on, let me. If you look up in there, you can see the Teflon on that. Yep. Okay, the Teflon seal. So if it overpressurizes, it just pushes up against that spring and blows steam off through these holes. That's essentially so the boiler doesn't explode. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, if you went way too far, yeah. We, we bypass the OPV. Oh, Don't yeah. want to do that because all machines have OPVs. Yeah. Now, with some machines, and like vibration pump machines, rather, these machines are used to control the actual brew pressure. Mm -hmm. In a rotary pump machine, it acts more as a safety. Okay. Because this, the rotary pump uh, will, will control the brew the pressure. pressure. The way this thing works is you have this screw head here. Mm -hmm. When you screw that, it pushes down on the spring, mm -hmm. which hits another rubber valve seat. And the tighter this is, the more pressure it's going to take to open it. Mm -hmm. When it, you have enough pressure that pushes this open, the water will bypass that, come through your tube, and off to a drain someplace, either a drip tray or reservoir, depending on the machine. Okay. So if you have a vibration pump machine, you'll probably set this between 9 and 10, depending on the machine. So that's, yeah, vibration pump, that would be used to actually yep. set your brew pressure. Set brew pressure. On these, we just set them up to around 11 or 12, just in case something happens and overpressurizes. Okay. Okay, it looks like we're getting to the brew group. Yeah. Okay, this is really cool. Okay, let's, let's kind of work our way through this and show you how this works. Okay. First, I'm gonna take some stuff out of here so you can, you can see. See what's going on. See these two holes? So that's, that's where, where your thermal siphon works. So the hot water comes through this, comes down into here, mm -hmm. as it cools, and goes back to the boiler. So it just keeps circulating, circulating through there all the time. Yep. Now, normally your brew lever here mm -hmm. is in the down position. So you notice that's closed. When you raise this up, it opens. It allows the water to flow through here. Okay. And then what I'll do to flow down, now this, we, uh, there's a marker on here that shows the water flow because they didn't cut right through the center of the hole. But the water will come, then come up through here, down through here, through your dispersion plate. Right. Not the coffee. Now that's the only part of the fun. <laughs> it's pretty involved, little piece of the. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see. So how, how this well. works. Okay. So, yes. Little screen in screen there. Screen in there. Okay. Okay, so this, this piece is, is down on top of here. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that's the best way to show this. Well, you see these little holes here? Mm hmm. So the water comes through that top hole, then goes back down through that to heat it. When you turn the pump on, this pressurizes, okay. pushes water up through these small holes here, mm -hmm. up into this chamber where this fits onto here. Did you get that okay? Yep. yep. Through this screen, through this orifice, down through here, and down through the opening. Which is down right, right there. Okay. So just the, the top of that, 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 it's that tiny little orifice where all your brew water is going through. Yep. That little guy. Yeah, through these four, and then through this up. one here. Yeah. So if you raise the lever, the pump goes out, but no water is coming through, that may be plugged. Okay. You know, if you get some minerals, calcium, mm -hmm. or some gook somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the top part of the group works. Okay. The bottom, right here, it has two springs with valve seats in here. So when you, you raise it up, mm -hmm. it closes, these close, the springs push everything closed. When you push it back down, it opens both of them. Can you see them both moving? Yep. There's two because you have so much pressure coming from the brewing system mm -hmm. that you don't want it to push this open. Okay. So that's why they have two in there. So lower it down, that's when you lower your brew group handle down, brew lemon down, you get like a psh right. coming out. Releases the pressure from your coffee through your, that tube, right. through that, down through here, and back down, down to your here. drip tray. Your drip tray. Cool. 
Now you might be wondering how that all works inside of here. It works off a cam. So you'll have, let's see, that there, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you raise the lever, sorry about moving around so much. No, that's okay. Turns that cam, pushes that up. When you put it down, that cam pushes a very similar one like this down to open it. Right, okay. That's how that works. There's a couple of little things in here we'll just kind of review. Yeah. Uh, you have a couple high limits here. Mm -hmm. uh, these are reset up manual resets. If the machine overheats or there's some sort of malfunction, these may pop up, like you see on a turkey, you know, when they're yeah. done. Yep. Just push it down and you hear a little click. You may feel it also, mm -hmm. and that'll reset those. So if the machine stops heating, that could be it. And your steam pressure gauge, which is here, mm -hmm. has a tube. It runs over the top of your steam boiler right here. Okay. That's where it senses the steam pressure. There's a hookup for your heating element. Oh, well, oh we can take a look take at a there's a little cutaway of the, uh, of the wand over there on the other side, on the steaming side, so you can see how okay. that kind of the anti-burn sort of system works in a lot of these machines. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right over here. So there's a tube inside the tube. Exactly. So there's a Teflon tube inside of here. It goes all the way down. You know, so they do get warm because the Teflon tube obviously comes in contact with the steam wand. They right. get warm, but they don't get stupid hot. Right. Or it's going to hurt. And on this particular machine, there's an O-ring there. And when you have the steam tip on, there's actually another O-ring that seals around the Teflon here. So there's, right. there's dual O-rings. Right. I think that covers pretty much everything. So, you know, it seems like such a simple thing to, you know, put some hot water over some coffee under pressure, but it really takes a little bit of thought. Yeah, I mean, this E61 has been around for a long time, too. Yeah. Um, does a fantastic job, so we like it, and they're not that hard to service either. As you can see, just a few pieces. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not a big deal. All right. Yeah, so, good. Well, I hope that helps you. Hope will solve some mysteries for you. All right. I'm Todd with Whole Latte Love, and it's Mark, and thanks for watching. Hey, why not subscribe now for easy, free access to more videos on everything coffee brought to you by wholelattelove.com.